Good afternoon everyone, how are we doing today? It is another cold, wet, miserable, windy day out in Flatland. So, I thought, what better thing to do on a video then is to talk about machine pricing. So I'm going to walk you through the finer details of machine pricing, all the bits and pieces that go into it, and for those of you that run hobby grade machines, like Shape Pocos, X-Files, that sort of stuff, I will try and give you some ballpark rules that you can work to to try and help price your products. Okay, so today's video is going to look like this. We're going to give you a little bit of background as to why we need to do this, look at the specific costings, break them down for you, give you an example, talk about the industry standard rates and how they relate to hobby and smaller machines. So if you're really not interested in all the information I've got to give, skip through on the chapters for that and uh, I guess we'll get into it then. Okay, so when we're looking at the background of it then, machines used to be relatively inexpensive compared to how some of the machinery that we're going to talk, at, talk about today is. So when you're talking about CNC's, um, like an 8 to 4 CNC machine can run from like 12 grand to like 25 to like 50 to maybe like 150,000 pounds, right? So you need to be making sure you cost them out correctly. The same goes for laser machines. Laser machines can run you, we won't really talk about the, the black and red type laser machines just yet, but like a proper laser machine, so if you go into like Epilogue, Trotec, um, ULS, US, yeah, ULS, um, or you're looking at the Chinese ones that you're importing, so direct from the factory, you're talking anywhere between like eight to 10,000 pounds all the way up to, I don't know, like 50 grand, 75 grand, something like that. And that's all dependent on the size of the machine, the wattage, number of tubes. And when you're talking about the CNC machines, the, the price is all dependent on the size of it, where the addition, so whether you have like vacuum tables, you've got vacuum pumps, whether you're running like an ATC, so an automatic tool changing spindle. Um, yeah, there's just loads and loads and loads of different add-ons, and it's like buying a car, right? Just like that. Okay, so looking at specifics then, it's basically like the previous video that I did. There's certain things that you need to look at and they're what you're gonna cost your hourly rate on for your machine. Um, so one of them is gonna be your initial machine cost. Obviously, when you're talking like 15, 20 grand, you need to be taking that into account on how much you're gonna be charging per hour. Replacement parts and the, expect uh, the life expectancy of those parts, as well as the life expectancy of the machine. Your maintenance costs that are gonna go into the machine and your labor wage for running the machine, okay? Once we've gone through all this, like I said at the start, we'll talk about the industry standard rates and how it's gonna relate, especially when you're running something like a hobby machine or a smaller laser machine. If you're not interested in all this stuff, I would recommend you watch it. Skip through to the chapter at the end. Okay, so when we're talking about initial machine cost, as an example, right, we'll try and use some easy numbers. So say for example, the machine costs 10 grand, right? And the life expectancy of the machine is gonna be like five years. Obviously it's gonna be, I would hope it's gonna be more, but there's certain things that go into these machines that you're gonna to have to start changing your stuff out after that. So if we say five years is a good amount of time before we're either gonna scrap it or replace it. So we're gonna look at about 10,000 pounds, we're gonna divide that by the five years, so that machine's gonna cost us two grand a year. Now when we're looking at replacement parts, like I said, certain things are gonna fail on there. If we say for argument's sake, two grand, right, worth of parts over that five years, so you're gonna take that two grand, you're gonna divide it by five, and that's gonna cost you 400 pounds a year. So you might sit there and think two grand, you're having a laugh, Josh, right? I'll give you an example, right? My laser machine is, um, uses a recce tube in there, which are really high quality tubes. They last for about 10,000 hours. So the tube costs 1,500 pounds. 10,000 hours, I'm not quite sure if I want to go to that far, so we'll say 7,500 hours is a conservative estimate. So we're going to do 1,500 pounds divided by 7,500 hours, right? That works out at 20p an hour, times that 20p an hour by 35 hours a week, and then we're going to times that cost by 52 weeks a year. That turns out at 364 pounds a year. So that 400 pounds that we came up with a minute ago doesn't really seem that much, does it? So don't forget, that's just for the tube, remember. That doesn't account for any cards, belts, lead screws, motors, anything like that that fails. That's just for the tube. We're gonna have to put by 365 pound a year to be able to buy a new tube. Now we have two tubes in that machine. It's a dual laser machine. So we need to be putting by 800 pounds a year to cover that machine. And that's without any additional parts. Okay, so now we're gonna look at maintenance. Now with a big machine like this, you should be putting an hour or two into every week. Now that could be whether you're changing out the water changing out the coolant, both our laser machine, our CNC router are water cooled. It could be that we're talking about spending an hour cleaning the machine, going around cleaning all, all the rubbish off, lubing up all the joints, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to do our hourly rate times the number of hours maintenance needed at the machine per year. So for argument's sake, we'll say two hours a week, which I don't really think you'd be spending two hours a week in there, but some weeks you might spend more, some weeks you might spend less. Occasionally things go wrong with machines and you might be spending a day or two fixing it. So on average, two hours a week. And in the last video, we looked at expected pricing rates 
and overhead, so, so how much you need to be charging your labor time out. And we came in at around about 40 pounds an hour, I think that was the example that we used. So that's what we'll use this time. So it's 40 hours a week for two hours. So that's 80 pounds a week. And you're gonna do that for 52 weeks a year because you're self-employed, you never get any time off work. So that works out at 4,160 pounds. Okay, so you're starting to add up already, right? So we're at 2,000 pounds for the initial machine cost per year. We're looking at putting by 400 pounds a year for your replacement parts. And then your maintenance time in there is gonna be about just over four grand. Okay, so I can hear some of you saying about the maintenance time, right? You've got to understand, either you have to pay somebody to do this maintenance, or you're taking time away from your day job, your workshop hours, to be able to pay for that. So instead of earning your 40 pound an hour in your workshop, you're then spending two hours a week when you could be earning that 40 pounds working on the machine. So you've got to cost it in there because you've still got your overheads to cover, right? So like I said, we've got 2,000 plus the 400 plus the 4160, that means a total cost of 65.60 a year. So 65.60 a year divided by 52 weeks, divided by 35 hours, because nobody wants to be doing more than 35 hour a week, do they? That comes in at three pounds 60 an hour. So that's your cost price, right? So it's costing you three pounds 60 an hour to run before you get into any utility costs or anything like that. Then you've got to have somebody running the machine. Now, again, if you're stood in front of the machine instead of in here working, your time is 40 pound an hour, right? That was the example we gave and that's the one that we're gonna use. So then we're at 43 pound 60. So we're going to stick a margin on top of there because that's wiggle room for us as a business and something that needs to be done. And obviously you don't just want to be paying to cover the machine, right? You want to be earning a little bit of money to maybe do upgrades, to maybe upgrade to a bigger tube or to with a CNC router, maybe you want to upgrade to a bigger vacuum table or something like that. Well, I mean a vacuum pump, but you get what I mean. Okay, so your margin, 40%, like we spoke about last time. So we're going to do 43.60 times 1.4 to give you 40% and that's going to come out at £52.32 an hour. So your hourly rate is going to be 52 32 so for argument's sake we'll round that down your machine hourly rate is going to be 50 pounds an hour at cost and this is important right is you're going to sit there and say wow 50 pound an hour that's mega money however if something if your machine dies your tube blows up or it shorts out or something like that and you need to go replace it and you've got to find 1500 pound for a tube who's got 1500 pound laying around right not very many people, well, and that is why people run it like this. When you're running your CNC router, tooling is a big one. Now, you might sit there and you say, right, hey, look, my router bit costs 50 pounds a piece. Okay, that's fair enough. That's not a bad price for a decent router bit or your milling bit. You're gonna be running that through MDF. You're gonna be running it through, you've got 100 parts to cut per sheet, and you probably think you're gonna get about five sheets at 100 parts before it starts to dull it, and you've either got to either get it resharpened or you've got to bin it. For argument's sake, we'll say that router bit was 50 quid, we're gonna get five sheets out of it before something has to happen. So we're gonna do 50 divided by five, obviously gives you 10 pound per board. So say for example, you've got a two hour job, you can stick another 20 pound on for your tooling costs. Then you've got your labor in and outside the actual machine running. So you have your finishing costs. So say for example, something comes off the laser machine, it's covered in flash marks, that needs sanding, you've got to account for that time. When you're running the CNC, you might have to take those bits of timber off and clean all the edges up, make everything look pretty, ready for the client. Again, that's finishing time that you need to take into account. So you have tool changes. So if you're running like two or three different tools in a job on the CNC, you're gonna to have to stop the CNC, take the tool bit out, put a new one in. Sometimes you're gonna to have to put a new collet in. Um, so that's all takes time. You've got the loading and loading the machine, especially if, you, if you're gonna be doing like five or 10 sheets, that all takes time as well. And so it's not just as simple as sitting there saying, hey, look, we're gonna charge this amount for the machine per hour and that's gonna cover all the costs. Because when you wanna start running it like a business, this is where these little bits and pieces, they're gonna come back and bite you in the butt. And then obviously you have your material cost plus your 20%, like we spoke about last time and all these other little bits and pieces. Okay, so we'll do a quick example on that then, shall we? Okay, so the client's been nice enough to send us a file. We don't need to do any design work or any setup. Everything's gonna run through nice and quickly. Put the file into the program and the program sits in and says, hey, look, it's gonna take you two hours to run that job. Awesome, okay, cool. So we know now that we're gonna charge the machine out at 50 pounds an hour. And the tooling cost for this job is gonna cost us, it's gonna be five pounds an hour, so we're gonna have 10 pound in total. So we're gonna use one sheet of 18 mil MDF and we'll say that's 50 pounds for the sheet. And when we're looking at 20% on top of that, because we've gone and we've gone to the builders merchants and picked it up, another 20% on 50, so that's gonna be another tennis, so that's 60 pounds in total. And once everything's done, we're gonna charge an hour's labor because we've got to load the machine, we've got to take the timber off, we've got to deal with it, so do any sanding bits and pieces, and there's a tool change in there. So we're gonna say an hour at 40 pounds. So the total is gonna be 160 quid, right? Now, then we're gonna stick a margin on top of that because we've got a business to run and we try and put a margin on there if we possibly can, because we're a business, we're not a charity. So we're gonna do the 160 times by 1.4, which is gonna give a grand total of 
224 pounds. See, I've done the sevens this time. I didn't think I have to do it on the fly. So yeah, so there's your example of how you would price up that job. So 224 quid for three hours worth of work doesn't seem too bad. However, if you're gonna spend 15, 20 grand on a machine, then it doesn't seem that great, does it? You're gonna to have to do a lot of work to pay that amount of money back. Right then, so shall we chat about the industry standard rates? Because everybody's waiting to hear this, I'm sure. We'll look at the router first. So a CNC router, industry standard is runs between maybe 60 to 200 pounds an hour, 60 pounds an hour for some more of the simpler machines. So that 200 pounds for the all singing, all dancing machines like that you get from companies like Felder because they will they'll have like self-loading systems for the sheets and they'll have auto tool changes on there and I mean they are okay so but they've cost the money for it right so that's why you're charging the extra money then we look at the CNC lasers now the CNC lasers you're gonna be running from maybe like 40 pounds an hour up to like hundred pounds an hour depending on the laser depending on how quick it is depending on what it can machine depending on how niche it is like our laser machine can cut through 25 mil acrylic not many laser machines can cut through 25 mm acrylic. We can cut through 15 mm birch ply. Not many people can do that, you know. So we can charge a little bit of a higher rate, but then that's because we had those higher initial costs going into that to be able to machine that timber and acrylic and that sort of stuff. You might be asking why you would charge less for the laser machine than the router. Those of you who've got laser machines might hate me for this, but it is there's less skill involved with the laser machine. So with a CNC router, you need to understand your chip load. You need to understand the, the feed at which the bit can go through. You need to understand how your feed and your chip load relates to the depth of cut, how the deflection you're gonna get on the bit is. There's a lot more monitoring. Um, different materials have different densities all the way through them. Yeah, there's just a lot of work that goes into running a router. That being said, the CNC laser, there is a little bit of work that goes into it. You know, you need to understand what feeds you can use for the different timbers, different densities, however, once, they, once you've got your ballpark, so I know for example that we would cut maybe like three mil birch at 25 millimeters a second. Now that will work for our machine, probably won't work for your machine, but I know that even if there's certain knots and bits and pieces in there, that, that feed speed will work for 90% of the things we cut at three mil. So it takes a lot of the skill out of using the machine, I guess. So much so my kids are more than happy to design something on the computer and go cut on the laser machine. They do not know they're born to be able to do that, man. That's an awesome thing to be able to do at that age, I tell you. So, I can hear you screaming, right? How does this relate to my hobby machine, Josh? Get on a bit, stop talking gibberish. So that's what we'll do now. How does it relate to a hobby machine? It's real simple, right? The first thing you need to do is you need to pick an industry standard rate that you're gonna be working from. So we'll use a uh, CNC again for this example, right? We're gonna use 100 pounds an hour because it's easy, okay? Right, so I know that a decent industrial machine with a good quality compression bit on 18 mil MDF is gonna cut that 18 mil MDF in a single pass at around about two and a half thousand millimeters per minute. So as an example, I believe a Shapeco 3 is gonna cut that 18 mil MDF in three passes, right? You're gonna do three lots of six mil at around about two and a half thousand millimeters per minute. So we're at a third of the speed, okay? So it's real simple. If it's gonna take three times as long to cut, we just divide the hourly rate by three. So you're gonna charge yours out at 33 pounds an hour, plus all the additional bits and pieces that we spoke about, tool in, labor, all that sort of stuff. So this isn't set in stone, there is wiggle room with it, but I think this gives you a really good starting point and an idea of how to approach it. Okay, so before I close out the video, please remember to like and subscribe. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the save, hit the notifications bells, there's loads of buttons. If you all could do that, that would be really appreciated. I'd, I'd be really appreciative of that. That's effectively what the channel runs on, is likes, views, shares, saves, all that sort of stuff. I mean, that's what YouTube wants, right? So without those sorts of things, nothing happens. That being said, what did you think? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Do you think I missed something out? Do you think I'm talking rubbish? Do you think that we're fleecing people? Do you think that companies are fleecing people? Does it make sense why people charge what they charge? And yeah, please just let me know any thoughts you have in the comments. As always, man, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any video ideas, please, please, please let me know in the comments. Uh, the Felder video that I did on the extraction unit, that was a request from somebody in the comments, so I'm always open to any ideas that you have. Um, time restraints, work restraints, all that sort of stuff. But if you have some ideas, please let me know. That would be awesome. Thank you very much. You'll take it easy. You have a great day and I shall catch you on the next one, all right?